functions. Okay, so when we were talking about exponential functions, we talked about the domain range. Okay, um, so this should be somewhat of a review. Exponential functions, the domain is, can anybody tell me? Are we going to have perfect functions? Yes. Um, we'll work on reviewing next week. Domain is all real numbers. Because, remember guys, when you are trying to determine the domain of any function, the question is, are there any problems? Do I divide by zero? You're not going to divide by zero with an exponential function. Um, is there a square root of a negative number? Well, there's no square roots with exponential functions. Really, honestly, those are the biggest issues, okay? Um, so if you don't have those two issues, then your domain is going to be all real numbers. Now the range, on the other hand, is not all real numbers, okay? The range for exponential functions is, um, well, it depends on a couple different factors, okay? Um, your basic range is y is greater than 0, okay? But if there is a negative, in front of the exponential function. So with number 31, uh, negative in front, then it's going to flip your function over. It's going to take your output, multiply by a negative number, so all of them are negatives. So then you've got y is less than 0. And there's even one more thing going on here in number 31. It's got a plus 2 on the end, so it's going to take all the values and shift them up to, um, so if there's a constant on the end, then um, it's either going to be y is greater than that constant, I'm going to say c, or y is less than that constant c, depending on, again, the positive or negative in front. So number 31, I'm still going to look at the graph to be 100% positive. Uh, but I know the domain is all real numbers. That's always the case. The range, I believe, should be y is less than 2. Because the negative 5 in front of the exponential function, okay, flips it over so it's less than, and the 2, the plus 2 on the end is going to shift it up 2. Uh, so let's double check it. We can always look at the graph. Someone's phone is not on silent. <coughs> we can always look at the graph. Be careful when you type this in. Put parentheses around the 1 half. Put parentheses around the x minus 1. And then put the plus 2 on the end. Graph it. And you can see that that is the case. Okay? Um, it is all the numbers and then all of our lines are below positive 2. They're all below positive 2. Now, logarithmic functions. The issue that exists with logarithmic functions, what can we not put into a log? A negative number. So, similar to our square roots, you take what's inside the log, and that has to be greater than 0. It also can't be 0. So the domain is going to be what's under, not what's under, what's inside the log. I'm thinking about square roots here for a second. What's inside the log greater than zero? What's inside the log greater than zero? Um, and the range for logarithms is all real numbers. Okay, all real numbers. Uh, just taking a second here to point out an inverse relationship. You know that exponential functions and logarithms are inverses. So if x and y switch places, then the domain and the range are going to switch places. So exponential functions have an unrestricted domain, all real numbers. So that means the range of logarithmic functions is going to be all real numbers. It has a restricted range, so it means logarithms are going to have a restricted domain. Yes? What's, what's inside the parentheses? Yeah, not the base, because the base is just going to be a constant. So if we're looking at number 38, for example, the domain is going to be what's inside the log, x plus 5, 
we're going to set that greater than zero and we're going to solve for x. So that says our domain is x is greater than negative 5 and the range is all real numbers. Is 38 not on there? Oh, I, okay. I don't remember what happened. I also, I used to put two functions on this and that was on there. Just boop, add it to the end of your worksheet there. Um, if you're graphing this in your calculator, you have to use change of base, the log of the big stuff, so x plus 5, divided by the log of the base, 0.5 or 1 half, and then your calculator will graph it. So there you can see that the graph kind of appears out of nowhere, right around negative 5, and it's greater than negative 5. And you're going to hit all the y values. Now I know this one looks like a square root function, but this is just the limit to capability that you have to calculate with this function here on the left side actually continues. It goes almost straight up. It doesn't just stop there. Okay, it's just the calculator doesn't graph with that much detail. All right, so from 31 to...